Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about how individual throttle bodies work. And so I've got two drawings here. On the left we have a four cylinder engine with a single throttle body and then on the right we have a four cylinder engine with individual throttle bodies. So looking here on the left, uh, very simple setup, which you're probably all very familiar with. You have your air intake, you know, this is going to be a much longer winding path uh, for most vehicles. Then you've got your throttle body that goes into your intake manifold and then into your engine. Now with an individual throttle body, as the name suggests, each cylinder has its own throttle. And so you can have this intake manifold just like this setup um, and the, you know, air intake and all that. You won't have that throttle body right there before the intake manifold. Uh, instead, you'll have one placed at each of the intake runners for each of the cylinders. Uh, and in this case, I've drawn it so you've just got your cable for your throttle, uh, cable driven, or it could be an electronic motor there that's going to be opening and closing this. And so all of those will open and close together uh, depending on you know where your foot is on the throttle pedal. Now, some of the differences between these, um, one of the things that can be tricky, which you may wonder, is how do you tune the air-fuel ratio for a setup like this, uh, where you don't have that you know, massive uh, intake manifold with the vacuum, which you can determine. So what you'll do is you'll actually tap in vacuum lines into each of these intake runners here, and all of that will feed to a vacuum box, and then you can have a map sensor, uh, which will connect up to that vacuum box. Uh, if you're unsure about how map sensors work, I do have a separate video explaining that. But that's how you will tune, uh, in this example, the air-fuel ratio of this system. Now, you know, what is the advantage of this system? Well, it's simple and it's cost-effective, and that's why almost everyone uses this, and you can size it accordingly for power. On the other hand, here, you're going to have the, the biggest difference between these two is that in here, you have a partial vacuum leading up to that throttle body when you're at partial throttle versus in this system, you have atmospheric pressure resting in your intake manifold. You don't even need this. You could honestly just remove that completely. Um, you know, you have to worry about filtering in that scenario, but you don't need this part of the system. The point is you have atmospheric pressure directly outside each of these cylinders, versus in this case, that atmospheric pressure when you floor it has to travel all the way into the cylinder rather than just traveling from right here to right here. So, you know, that's one of the big advantages um, of this individual throttle body setup is that you have instantaneous throttle response because the second you press on that throttle, that atmospheric pressure is right there and it goes right in your cylinder. So great to have that throttle response. You're also going to have reduced pumping losses at partial throttle because instead of drawing a vacuum through this giant area right here, uh, instead you're only going to be filling up this volume in each of these uh, intake runners before you get to that throttle body. So you're going to have a very small vacuum in comparison, less pumping losses. So this can be more efficient at partial throttle. Now again, as I mentioned, you can remove this intake manifold here, and in doing that, you can improve the airflow uh, for each of these cylinders, so you can make it easier. Obviously, there's no restriction coming in, uh, so that can be a horsepower benefit. Uh, you don't have those bends winding through that air intake if you do you know, eliminate this whole system. Uh, so from an efficiency standpoint, it does make sense. Now, which of these systems is going to make more power? And that's really not a question where you're going to say this one or this one. Really, it comes down to sizing. So you could have a very large intake manifold system on an engine uh, that isn't restrictive at all and would allow for maximum horsepower at high RPM. And you could have a very restrictive, uh, you know, small individual throttle body system. And so at high RPMs, it wouldn't work out. So you can have, you know, uh, individually tuned velocity stacks for these uh, where you make it very efficient for a certain RPM band, but you don't want to just say that, you know, inherently this is going to have more power than this because that all comes down to the sizing of, you know, the piping in there. And so, you know, one's not necessarily better th than the other from a power standpoint. You are going to get uh, instantaneous throttle response. You're going to have the instant throttle response with this, which will be great. You'll definitely notice that. Um, and then you're going to have reduced pumping losses. So more efficient at partial throttle throttle. At wide open throttle, um, you know, it really depends on the setup. One's not necessarily going to be better than the other. You just have to tune for what you're going for. High power, high RPM means you're going to want, you know, shorter length intake runners. You're going to want larger intake runners. Uh, high power at lower RPM, you're going to want longer runners, uh, a bit more restrictive system. So it's more turbulent. You get quicker airflow. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.